then emphasis on robustness, privacy, generalization, and their interconnections. And today, she will present her talk on the title of Secure and Safe Autonomous Driving in Adversarial Environments. Bo, please take away. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the nice introduction. Yeah, I updated my uh, title a little bit on um, uh, general trustworthy machine learning for autonomous vehicles. And it's a great honor to share some of our recent research uh, in this domain and I'm Bo. So first of all, uh, we, uh, I hope everyone here is quite familiar, actually be convinced about that uh, the machine learning models are very vulnerable, especially when it is applied to safety critical domains such as autonomous vehicles. For instance, uh, a couple of years ago, we have uh, generate, uh, generated these types of physical adversarial row signs, which shows that even with uh, white and the black rectangles, which are optimized over the uh, patterns and shapes and the positions, it can be um, used to mislead uh, the uh, autonomous vehicles to misrecognize it as a speed limit sign 45, which could be quite dangerous in real world. Which uh, and such a physical road sign has been exhibited in the Science Museum of London and raised a lot of social concerns. And similarly, uh, we can actually apply or place these types of physical adverse or low sign in the physical world and generating such um, attacks uh, continuously, not only against classification models, but also these types of object detection models, as well as we can see, even though many other um, objects can be correctly uh, classified or recognized, but the low sign itself with perturbations on it won't be able to um, recognized correctly. And uh, not only for single modality types of sensing models, but also for the commercial simulations with uh, sensor fusion in equipped systems, for instance, uh, with both, uh, both like uh, LG and Apollo, we can see the adversarial object here, which is a cone here with optimized texture and shape. And the in this way, the car equipped with a uh, LiDAR and uh, cameras will completely miss the object there and uh, like run into it, which raises a lot of concerns. So with such um, like uh, both digital perturbations or uh, vulnerabilities against autonomous vehicles in digital world and uh, physical world and in real uh, life, where we can see a lot of accidents caused by different autonomous vehicles, this has raised a lot of questions and concerns about how we can uh, test the safety of autonomous vehicles and how we can robustify them in order to make the uh, driving uh, itself safe in real world. And uh, on the high level, actually, not only uh, different researchers, groups, industries have been uh, focused on that, but also the um, White House recently, just last year, uh, published the blueprint for air abuse of rights, emphasizing the five important problems in uh, machine learning, including safety, um, privacy, uh, fairness, explanation, and the human in the loop. So with this, Actually, in our lab, we mainly focus on designing and certifying the robust private and generalizable machine learning paradigms for real world applications with the central goal of closing the trustworthiness gap uh, for general machine learning uh, models, which can be deployed in different domains. And uh, I believe such a central goal of closing the trustworthiness gap itself actually to set, sit at the central of different aspects of trustworthy machine learning itself. For instance, from the robustness pr perspective, as we just uh, seeing some examples, we're exactly trying to explore either the training or testing data manipulation in the adversarial environment, including the SWAM model exploration and how we can provide certified defenses against those attacks uh, via uh, like knowledge and the data properties and the real knowledge integrated logical reasoning. And later on, we'll see even in autonomous driving such a very quite, um, like realistic scenarios, it's possible to provide certain level of certification for it, which we can see is very important, um, 
And uh, from the privacy perspective, as we can see, not only like safety and security is important, but also different uh, data privacy, machine learning model, proprietary privacy is very important, uh, not only in autonomous vehicle domain, but also many other machine learning domains. For instance, here, in terms of privacy, we're exactly trying to minimize the output distribution distance to protect the sensitive information in the training, uh, leading to different privacy attacks, privacy preserving data generating models, and uh, uh, privacy preserving learning. And uh, on the other hand, from the generalization perspective, we can see we are exactly trying to deal with the natural distribution drift under this scenario compared with the adversarial distribution manipulation in the robustness case. And uh, therefore, we can see naturally there are na uh, underlying connections between the robustness generalization and privacy as well. Therefore, actually, not only against each individual pillars that um, the, as many groups were doing research on each individual pillars, but also we focus on uncovering the underlying connections among them. For instance, uh, we show that under certain mild conditions, the robustness and generalization can be bidirectional indicators for each other, which will enable a lot of new uh, applications in real world. So in this uh, talk, I'll mainly focus on the robustness and safety perspective for autonomous vehicles and uh, use this as an example to give an um, um, example to show the holistic view of trustworthiness of machine learning itself, not in different domains. So taking the safety and the security of autonomous vehicle as an example, we can see the first important thing is how we can test the safety of autonomous vehicles, right? And from this figure, we can see that actually the safety critical scenarios, including different collisions and including uh, like different types of um, scenarios that yeah, are actually on the long uh, tails. For instance, in real world, different companies here listed in the x-axis has run a lot of miles to test the safety of vehicles. But we can see over the like long miles of testing, the safety critical scenarios are like sit on the long tail itself. And you need a lot of like millions of miles in order to hit those uh, like small or se uh, severe consequences or uh, like se uh, safety critical scenarios. So to make such safety testing more uh, efficient and effective, we definitely need to generate the realistic safety critical scenarios to help such testing behaviors. And overall, um, in the past of years, based on the different efforts, we have built up a survey about the safety critical scenarios and categorize the safety critical scenario into different categories, in, uh, including the data-driven scenarios, adversarial driven uh, scenario where we auto um, purposely optimize adversarial behaviors with different agents and different uh, trajectories. And uh, finally, the knowledge-enabled generation, which I will discuss later, like why it's important to integrate domain knowledge and uh, different, for example, causal relationships as a guidance to guide us generate different safety critical scenarios. And here on the uh, high level, we can see uh, there are several metrics or properties that we hope to satisfy for different algorithms uh, used for safety critical scenario generation, including the fidelities, how realistic it is compared with uh, real world scenarios, and efficiency, of course, and diversity so that we can touch different corner cases and uh, provide a comprehensive uh, safety test and the transferability uh, where we can transfer from different uh, AD algorithms to others uh, as we'll see later and the controllability such that we can control the environment, control the uh, different properties and uh, dimensions of the safety itself. So the um, short answer for different perspective is that currently there is no like single algorithm that is perfect, but with more and more development and algorithm um, uh, like improvement, we can see there are several algorithms can achieve different angles for these um, challenges. And uh, we'll give a brief in, uh, like overview about different algorithms later. And with this in mind, uh, my talk today will be categorized into two parts. One, uh, the first part is that we will give a brief overview of different 
interesting safety critical scenario generation, including SafeBench, which is an overall uh, platform in like hosting different um thousands of safety critical scenarios. And then I'll introduce some interesting uh, algorithms using diffusion models, even using uh, large language models such as ChatGPT and the causal relationship to generate different scenarios. And then we'll briefly take a look at how we can certify the robustness of autonomous vehicles uh, given, say, point clouds only or sensor fusion systems. So first, let's take a look at different types of safety critical scenario generation and so that we can have a overall understanding about how hard and how um, like uh, significant we can test the safety of autonomous vehicles in real world. And first of all, uh, I want to introduce the SafeBench, which is a unified platform for safety critical uh, autonomous uh, driving scenario generation and testing. So here, uh, we actually develop this um, platform for hosting different scenarios so that we can look at the different properties of those scenarios and develop different um, metrics to measure the autonomous driving algorithms to see which algorithm is more robust uh, from different angles and what factors would uh, affect the robustness of the algorithms more. And this is a brief overview of the platform itself, uh, which is built uh, uh, in based on the color simulator and use ROS for uh, communication itself. Here we have a Docker image and uh, compose different component. For instance, the user component itself will integrate different uh, autonomous driving algorithms. And the, then we have different nodes and the scenario node itself is in charge of generating different diverse safety critical scenarios so that it's modernized and we can uh, in, in, include the different types of scenarios and different types of AD algorithms separately and do the testing uh, itself. And uh, on the, uh, over this um, platform itself, uh, we have hosted different uh, like routes and the environment and under each routes and the environment uh, will generate different safety critical scenario, including, for example, left turn and uh, uh, like uh, with pedestrians and the cyclists uh, coming out with some uh, obstacles of the scene before. And based on this, we can see here are some qualitative um, examples, for instance, with the environment here, uh, we'll see a crash with a pedestrian when it's suddenly coming out as one type of scenario. And uh, it's also possible from the simulation, we can see a car driving out suddenly from the left-hand side, which is another uh, types of safety critical scenario. Um, and a left turn, which is a typical um, scenario and uh, draw in different environment, including uh, city and uh, uh, rural environment. So with this, we can see there are different levels of evaluation metrics based on these different types of scenarios, including the safety level where we explore uh, or evaluate the collision rate, the frequency of running to the light and frequency running into a stop sign, etc. And the functionality level, including the route following, the average percentage of the route completion uh, and the different metrics. And finally, um, the adequate level where w um, the average acceleration, whether it's um, driving normally like a normal human being or the average uh, yield velocity to make sure the uh, conf like conformal, like comfortable uh, levels of different uh, driving behaviors. And with this categories of the evaluation metrics, will be able to filter out some scenarios based on their safety uh, scores overall. And there is some statistics showing that actually with different algorithms, it's very possible and efficient to generate different safety critical scenarios. And it's possible to filter out and then to perform more efficient testing over different algorithms. So here is a brief overview and I uh, want to show some interesting uh, numbers and conclusions to get uh, more understanding of it. So basically we can see here based on the collision rate and uh, uh, the severe collision rate here, we can see the scenario selections largely help to 
increase the safety critical for the selected uh, scenarios. And for instance, here, the average collision rate is over 70 or 80 for different, uh, like here, um, the LC and the uh, uh, AS and CS is different types of autonomous driving uh, safety critical scenario uh, algorithm generation. For instance, the AT represent the adversary trajectory and the CS representing the um, color different uh, scenarios for uh, uh, standard uh, scenarios. So basically, we can see if we optimize the um, adversarial behaviors with adversary trajectories as AT here, it can largely improve the collision rate and safety critical uh, levels of the generated scenarios. And uh, here, as we mentioned, uh, not only in terms of collision rate, but in terms of different score, like OS representing the overall scores and the severe overall scores, they are uh, all, uh, like the adversarial trajectory itself, all significantly improve the severeness of such generated scenarios. And finally, we can see the CS actually achieve highest transferability over different uh Algorithm, autonomous driving algorithms, which is mainly because that this uh, standard scenario itself actually already taken a uh, different algorithm into account. And on the, in the other world, it's agnostic to different AD algorithms. So the transferability itself uh, is uh, high. And uh, based on this, for different properties and uh, um, metrics on the different scenarios, the interesting uh, next thing is, what if we use different scenarios to test the different types of AD algorithm itself? For instance, here, uh, consider different AD algorithm, including the PPO, TD3, different end-to-end -end reinforcement learning, and we have some uh, uh, connected uh, like pipeline structures of the uh, algorithm itself. And we can see, uh, first of all, different algorithms have different vulnerabilities under different scenarios. For instance, Overall, uh, actually, the PPL works um, the worst compared with uh, other algorithms, and uh, the SAC itself uh, works relatively normal, and uh, uh, compared with other algorithms, it's uh, safer in this scenario. And uh, here we can see um, on the different, not only the safety critical like collision rate in the first table, but also on the different metrics, we can see different algorithms behave differently. And that lead to new questions about whether we can actually uh, compose the pros and cons of different algorithms to help generate safe autonomous driving uh, algorithms, uh, taking different scenarios and the metrics and the functionalities into account. So this overall gives us a platform that we can pla uh, play with to um, generate safety critical scenario and test the different AD algorithms and understand both the property and the severeness of the scenario itself and the vulnerability and the safety levels of the AD algorithm itself, which um, provide interesting uh, conclusions and interesting uh, guidance for the algorithm and scenario generation. And based on this platform, actually, there are lots, several interesting uh, things we can do to uh, conclude and do to generate different types of scenarios. For instance, here we can see almost all the algorithm perform poorly on SafeBench. And then we can see whether we can use other algorithms to generate uh, additional scenarios to uh, fulfill this overall ban uh, platform and help the uh, scenario uh, generation and uh, safety critical scenario testing for different AD algorithms. For instance, here, there, there's an in interesting example I want to showcase to tell how we can leverage the diffusion models itself to generate such safety critical scenarios. And the goal to leverage diffusion model is that we can train it well on the real world cases to guarantee or to ensure the realism of the generated scenario itself. For instance, here is the overall structure. And uh, based on this structure, there are two steps uh, mainly to uh, generate the uh, critical safety critical scenarios. So first of all, given a diffusion model, as we mentioned, we can first pre-train it with um, the 
trajectories and uh, driving behaviors uh, collected from real world. For instance, uh, from different real uh, color scenarios or real collected data driving data set. And then with this, in after the diffusion step, uh, in the denoise step, for each um, like denoise step here, we can go out one step further based on different adversarial uh, optimization. For instance, you can optimize the safety level like collision rate we mentioned before, or optimize the functionality level uh, uh, like uh, whether you can follow the lane uh, or follow the trajectory completely and the different constraints like constraints like the comfortable level etc and for each step we will move out uh, as a detour uh, based on the adversarial optimization and then use the natural denoise step to uh, optimize it back such that the noise removal will still help it follow the real world scenario uh, behavior. So with this, in each step, we can do such um, adversarial um, optimization and then optimize over different uh, adversarial ob objectives. And such objectives can come from the safe bench that we mentioned before in terms of different metrics. And eventually we'll be able to generate the adversarial trajectory and behaviors uh, as a final output. As a uh, and as a uh, high level, we can see that uh, consider the different metrics as we mentioned before. That the collision rate, incompleteness of the route, and the complete uh, speed set uh, factions. Here we can see with this uh, diffusion model generated scenario compared with all the um, baselines we mentioned before, like adversarial trajectory, etc. And uh, it will actually indeed increase the um, se severeness of the safety critical uh, of the uh, scenarios itself, as we can see it's increased the collision rate much higher. And then uh, in terms of the realism of it compared with um, the generated scenario by other method, it's also um, performed like closer with the real uh, driving behaviors, which make it more efficient and effective uh, in terms of uh, testing different uh, autonomous driving uh, algorithms. And based on this uh, quantitative result, let's look at some qualitative result here. There's uh, one scenario where the crossing uh, ne uh, negotiation and the under multi-agent scenarios, as we can see, there are multi-vehicles uh, coming by and uh, some of them could be adversarial and they can even coordinate with, with each other. And uh, you can see the scenarios could lead to a uh, collision for the ego vehicles itself. And the second one is a straight obstacle where we just go straight and then we can see the cyclist driving by. This is a single agent behavior and uh, it's generate safety critical scenarios for it. So with this, we can see indeed with the uh, help of the diffusion models, we can leverage the uh, large uh, pre-training um, data from the real world to ensure the uh, like the realism of the generated uh, safety critical scenarios. And uh, on the other hand, uh, next I want to show an interesting example that not only the diffusion model itself, but also we can leverage additional knowledge and information such as uh, large language models such as ChatGPT to provide more safety critical scenarios from the language perspective so that we can leverage it to automatically generate those safety critical scenarios in a uh, and end pipeline fashion. Mm, here is a quick uh, pipeline that uh, is if, uh, effective to generate safety critical scenarios. For instance, you can just ask the um, questions about different safety critical scenario by providing the like the rules, the environment, uh, the conditional constraints of the scenarios. And then based on the NLP answers of the ChatGPT itself, we'll train a retrieval-based model from the NLP to code mapping, where uh, we modularize the different um, like behaviors of, of the drivings and the different agents as different uh, modules. And then we can train the retrieval database to map uh, the NLP languages with their neighborhood um, p uh, code snippets so that this neighborhood uh, can map to different functionalities of the um, driving behaviors. And in this way, 
the trained retrieval database here can be actually composed with any language models later to uh, generate the code behaviors. And here we first generate a single code and then map it to the uh, actual scenario generation in Kala for the scenario generation. And here to show some interesting example actually coming out from uh, ChatGPT itself. For instance, the language here is coming from the language model saying the ego vehicle is driving and the adversarial pedestrian will stand behind the car and uh, coming out to lead to severe consequences. And here the interesting phenomenon is that not only the language model itself can give us the critical scenarios careful description, but also uh, it can give diverse scenarios because of the large um, language model training database it has. And similarly here, the ego vehicle is uh, attempting to change lanes. And uh, in this case, the adversarial vehicle uh, in front actually adversely changed the lane to um, misguide or cause consequences, severe consequences for the ego vehicle itself. And uh, in, you can see in different environment, actually the ego, um, the scenarios caused by or generated by say ChatGPT itself can help to provide different um, behavior description and uh, the, uh, the retrieval database will map it to the code database and generate a scenario here. And uh, similarly with uh, 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 right hand in terms of the adversarial agent, which will come in by directly in the uh, left uh, turn itself. So with this, we can see not only such data-driven types of model uh, knowledge coming from like large language model such as ChatGPT, but also the imp the real world knowledge as first order logic rules is also very important. For instance, here uh, we show that we can map different knowledge, so for, for example, the traffic rules as the first order knowledge rules and the encode into different trees and therefore guide the generation of the scenarios to make sure it's not only safety critical, but also satisfying the traffic scenario uh, rules itself. Because as we can see, there are some corner cases. For instance, if you just give this prompt to a uh, different model itself, directly generate a scenario, this is an image rather than a, a trajectory. And you can see we'll uh, get something like this, which is high resolution, but not realistic. And such knowledge could be other um, relationship, such as causal relationship, that we can do the intervention to optimize the causal relationship as one type of knowledge, and then use it as the guidance, knowledge guidance to generate the safety critical scenarios based on the causal relationship here. So we can see here, against those safety critical scenarios, uh, I will quickly uh, use five minutes to give some overview about how we can actually improve and even certify the robustness of autonomous uh, uh, drivings against those uh, adversarial scenarios. Mm, not only against like point clouds, but also in the fusion systems, but uh, we'll use just a point cloud as an example. So here we can see indeed with a car, if you have different semantic transformations, as we shown before, even like rotation, translations, or other things, uh, you can lead to um, like the misrecognition or misdetection of the object itself. So it's possible uh, for us to have the first certified protocols or framework to certify uh, for not only point cloud, but also the center fusion um, uh, models in, uh, to provide a certification guarantee. And um, intuitively, the certification means that under certain transformations, such as rotation with five degree, for instance, the prediction or the recognition is always guaranteed. So this is a certification we can uh, obtain, and uh, this can uh, used to certify different, like the safety critical scenarios we mentioned before, by viewing them as uh, different types of transformations. And here is a brief uh, view of the potential, uh, like the theorem of such uh, transformation uh, certification itself and the condition uh, under mild conditions. So we can see in terms of the angles itself, we can guarantee that the top one, the top two, A, P, A and P, B representing the top one, and the top two um, prediction confidences is larger than certain threshold, meaning that it's always right under the certified uh, trans 
transformation parameterized itself. And uh, it shows that it's possible to provide rigorous certification for not only point cloud, but also we'll show a quick example about sensor fusion systems here. So here we can see these are different types of models, like uh, not some uh, single modality, for example, only image or point cloud, some are um, uh, like um, multimodality, including image and point cloud. And from the certification numbers, we can see actually it's possible to provide a tight certification for such uh, models. For instance, here we can see the empirical certification, uh, the empirical um, robustness and the certified robustness, which is a lower bound of the empirical robustness, is actually quite close within like five or six percent, showing the tightness between the empirical and the theoretical certification itself. And we can see the certification for like uh, some types of um, multimodality model, for example, force comp here is indeed much more robust than the single modality model, give a more confidence and the guidance about what types of model we should select and leverage in um, practice. So with that, um, I want to uh, finally show some platforms that would be helpful for providing different certification and uh, the uh, robustness uh, uh, analysis for reinforcement learning, autonomous driving uh, from different perspectives and things. And uh, would, uh, if you are interested in the safety critical scenario generation, we have uh, actually a computation and workshop in CVPR. And if you are interested, welcome to join and discuss. Yeah, thank you. Let's thank uh, Professor Bo Lee for her amazing talk. Um, any questions from the audience? Um, so I have a question. Um, so uh, do you think it uh, will be good to train on these uh, safety critical scenarios that's being generated? Or do you think that's mainly serving as a evaluation set for us to get a better idea how robust um, the autonomous driving algorithms are? Yeah, great. That's a very nice question. Indeed, um, it's actually helpful to train the AD algorithms against those uh, safety critical scenarios. And we have uh, some results showing that after training uh, with those scenarios, indeed, the robustness will be improved. Um, but of course, we need to balance the trade-off between the level 3 and the benign so that it's not overfitted with uh, one scenario. And we can see with different qualities of safety critical scenarios, the trained model will behave differently as well. So it's important to generate high quality and the trained on it would be very helpful. Yes. Great. Um, and in terms of um, different autonomous driving algorithms, do you observe that they have different corner cases or failure cases, or they tend to fail on similar scenarios that are generated? Yeah, that's a very good question. Indeed, the result I showed before is overall like collision rate, like average over all the safety critical scenarios. But indeed, we observe that uh, different safety, uh, like uh, driving scenarios have certain tendency to uh, like uh, cluster with the different clusters of corner cases. And uh, indeed, it will be com good to compose their behaviors together to actually um, be robust against the different types of corner cases. Yes, that's a great observation. Yes. yes. Great. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? If not, uh, let's thank uh, the speaker again uh, for her great talk. So uh, next, we'll have a panel discussion. And uh, so uh, Professor Bo Li and uh, Professor Yi Liao 